Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to the Elder Scrolls of Guild and Coin. Um, today we're picking up on our session two from where we left off uh, last week. Um, today I am joined by plenty of good friends. Um, so that said, uh, why don't you guys go through and, in, uh, for, for those who missed the first uh, episode, as it were, introduce your characters um, and, well, yourselves. I will go ahead and start with, uh, we'll start with Bob. Okay. Uh, so I play Zira, a red guard, uh, fightery sort. She loves, loves, loves her swords. And she's very small. Much fight. <laughs> <laughs> Much fight. All that little rage is such a small child. <laughs> She's only like four foot seven and probably doesn't weigh very much. She looks about to be 12 years old, despite the fact that she's 16. So yeah, very small, much, much fight. Too much fight for such a small body. <laughs> All right. Um, moving on to Julianak. Trash jar. Oh, me? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, I am Julianak. I am a monk, orc, and I am the world's okayest orc dad. And <laughs> and um, my story is that I am on the path of redemption, which is why I became a monk because I have a really bad criminal history, and I <laughs> met like like a really long while. Like I've been to jail at least every year, and I just recently got out of it again. Um, especially like before I just got out of it again. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and and you'll notice that I always have a glass of whiskey in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um next up how about uh Tashtar, our resident cannibal? No, it's not cannibalism. I'm, yes, I'm Brigitte, is. and I ate an Argonian. That is not cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. That means... beings. <laughs> oh, excuse you. Does that mean, like, you don't see, like, Argonians as, like, no, you know, equal I'm to you? <laughs> cannibalism if I ate another Khajiit. Wow, okay. <laughs> you just, like, <laughs> the... not hurt your own kind. <laughs> your own species. <laughs> Uh, anyway, my character's Tashdar, um, the Khajiit Nightblade. Uh, I guess that interaction might be all you really need to know about my character. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Typical Duncan exclamation. <laughs> Alright, um, and then on to Zoe Maelstrom. It's me, Zoe Maelstrom, self-proclaimed sorcerer. Standing at a beautiful three foot tall, way too uh -huh. <laughs> excited to have you on the party. Let's go <laughs> catch some fish. <laughs> All right, and then our uh, newcomer to the series. Um, how about to the flying dagger? You see a mysterious figure in the corner, shadowy, dark, handsome. He can't hold the dagger in his hand. He chuckles to himself. Nothing personnel, kid. He teleports behind you, stabs you several times, and vanishes. No, oh, hi. I'm a Jaunty. Uh, I'm an Argonian rogue. Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my Nightblade can literally do that, and I'm so happy, because I made that joke when I was making my character, and Did no you one got it. it. <laughs> so, wonderful. All right. So... Basically, um, fla uh, like fast forwarding over to the fourth era, Michael smiled as more people sat around the fired pit and ordered drinks and food. Sinmir must have enjoyed listening to his story the night prior and was the first to arrive. Already, he was seated close to where the bard stood, ale in one hand and a loaf of bread in the other. Hulda's hands were full as some of Whiterun's residents bickered over what to eat. Even the Khajiiti caravan that regular stopped outside Whiterun's gates had heard rumors of the tale that Michael was spinning at the Bannered Mare, and a few of the felines stood in the back of the room where their keen ears would still hear him, but they wouldn't draw any suspicion from the Nords who had all gathered in the room. 
We are waking, we are waiting, Michael. Get on with it. The skald took a gulp of water, then raised his hands dramatically as he'd learned to do when performing in Cyrodiil. Immediately, the room quieted down as if some sort of magic compelled them to focus on him. What danger our companions must have faced in the, in the siege at Davin's Watch. War had arrived on their doorstep and broken them free of the chains that would have otherwise been their last embrace. But with their gear finally in hand, and with the danger at their back, they made due course to Ebenhart. Little did they know that though Ebenhart was a refuge, it was also a city where dark shadows may find purchase. Crime and villainy abound in times of war, and history haunts those who feed the shadow. All right. So basically where we'd last left off, you guys had uh, managed to show up in uh, the city of Ebenhart. Um, you guys had managed to get through the gates with no trouble. Um, none of the guards really passed you guys any sort of glances or anything like that because, you know, you're just more travelers. Um, so while there, you guys were able to uh, go to the Ebony Flask Inn and purchase a number of rooms. Um, it's still roughly around, so roughly around midday, so you guys have a little bit of time to kind of, like, to explore the town or to, um, kind of get yourself started on any sorts of projects you might want to do at the inn. Um, so the inn itself, um, is a crescent-shaped building with two stories and a basement, um, and upon entering on the ground floor, you find yourselves in a room with a couple of tables and benches, an open fire pit, uh, several people enjoying drinks of food. Um, to the left is a doorway leading to the northern wing of the Crescent, where the innkeeper stands at a desk going over her records and managing the inn. Uh, to the right is a doorway to the southern wing, where there are more tables and stools with people eating and drinking, and where a Dunmer cook busies himself behind a counter. Um, he's preparing meals and sending them out with uh, with various barmaids. And a bard, uh, also behind the counter, is strumming on a sitar, providing entertainment for the guests. Um, the stairwell from, the, from that foyer uh, leads up to the second story, where there are rooms and beds for rent, and a balcony overlooking that foyer. And another stairwell leads down to the basement, where storage is kept, and where, from what you're hearing from other guests... Um, there is bed and an entertainer who does private sessions. Um, the Ebony Flask does double as a corner club, so there's, uh, pungent smoke drifting up from various hookahs and hanging heavy in the air. Um, in some rooms you're quite certain that the moaning and screaming has absolutely nothing to do with drink or food, but rather an entirely different kind of ap- uh, kind of appetite. Um. <laughs> so... Pretty much. The, the Dunmer know how to enjoy themselves. Um, so, all that's, <laughs> so all that said, um, what are you guys up to in this tavern? Um, Thurman, we will get to you. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go eat. I'm going to eat till I'm a nice fat cat. <laughs> Alrighty. Can, can, I want to check to see if they have like another bottle of like the whiskey that I have. Okay. Or any whiskey. Okay. So you guys seat yourselves at tables, and a and an Argonian uh, barmaid uh, comes up to you, and uh, she in in one hand she's holding a piece of paper, in the other hand she's holding a quill. Welcome, to, welcome to the Ebony Flask Inn. What can I get for you? Do you guys have any whiskey at all? Well, that depends. What kind of whiskey do you want? Wait, what's the whiskey I got? Like, just Orcish whiskey or something? Um, y yeah, you've got a you've got a type of uh, we'll just say it's uh, it's Orsinium uh, Orsinium brew. Okay. Um, do you have like Orsinium whiskey at all? We might. I'll have to check with the cook. All right, cool. <laughs> and I'd like to ask her for a hot meal of her recommendation. A hot meal of my recommendation? Well, perhaps you'd like our cooked quama eggs. Yes. Um, she 
scribbles on the uh, she scribbles on the piece of parchment. Um, is anybody else sitting at the table with uh, with Zoe and Chilinak? Uh Yes, Zero would probably be sitting there since uh, Orc Daddy has a promise to provide. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> um, the the Argonian barmaid turns her head toward uh, toward you. Can I get you anything, little one? Uh, breads and cheese. Uh, quickly marks it down. Did you want anything to drink? Uh, she kind of glances over at the orc for a moment. Um, ale. <laughs> no, you're not drinking alcohol, little missy. <laughs> uh, the... Barmaid scratches it down on a piece of par a piece of parchment and says, "I'll be right back with your order," <laughs> and heads off toward the uh, toward the kitchen. Uh, Tashtar, what are you up to? Uh, I think I'm going to be at a non table trying to cheat people out of their money with games of chance. <laughs> um, That's about right. There are people playing uh, playing various card games. Um, and other people are playing uh, other kinds of like dice-based games and the like. So you you definitely have that opportunity. Um, any particular table you're looking for? Um, hmm. Probably a card game. I'd have to say. Okay. So you managed to find a table where an Argonian and uh, a you find an Argonian playing, a Dunmer playing, and a Nord playing, um, as well as as well as a uh, uh, Bosmer. They do look like they've been drinking a little bit. Okay. So if you would like, go ahead and roll a. Because uh, I'm assuming you're bluffing the hell out of them. Um, be bluffing or another type of bluffing which is cheating <laughs> um okay which would you like to start with the cheating or the bluffing um the cheating which i assume would be sleight of hand yes it would be awesome that is 14 so it seems like you might be able to get away with this. The the Nord has clearly ha already had like several uh, several mugs of mead. Um, the Dunmer, who is trying to daintily sip on his flynn, is accidentally spilling it all over his jerkin. Um, and the the other two, they look they look like they're still fairly new to the new to the game, trying to learn this strange uh, Dunmer card game. Uh, so you are actually able to cheat them out of a little bit of money, uh, about seven septums each. So you gained about maybe uh, 21 septums. Nice. Yeah. Um, so you guys are enjoying yourselves in the inn. Uh, Thurman. Yes, and kill everyone. <laughs> Wait, um, <now. laughs> <laughs> so, Thurman, I, I assume you sw you swift out switched out of your um your uniform, as it were, and into uh, civilian clothing. Oh, yeah, civilian clothing. Okay. Um, outside, uh, it's actually, I mean, it's fairly nice for uh, for Morrowind. Um, looming above the city is the Velothi Mountains and the Ash Mountain, which are all uh, glowing with molten lava. The the range has been fairly active lately. Um, massive mushrooms grow out of the ground like an alien fungal forest, and uh, these mushrooms tower over l other large plants, including gnarled and mossy trees, shrubs, grasses, hardy herbs. Um, the The air in the region is somewhat heavy with ash from all the uh, from all the from all the volcanoes. But uh, behind the acrid volcanic gases that occasionally waft over the region. Um, you, you've been able to smell a bit of a freshness, um, which can only mean one thing in this area, and that is that rain is on the way. Oh, all right, all right. I, I guess I would be dressed up like a, I, I suppose like a dock worker of some sort. Uh, our, are we not near a dock by chance? Uh, so 
one of the nice parts about Ebonheart is it does have a sizable Argonian population. In fact, the entire northern district of Ebonheart um, is made up of Argonian-style uh, mud houses, um, all kind of surrounded by a wall of sharpen sharpened uh, wood and bone. Um, in fact, um, when you first came into town, you could you could feel that telltale twinge in the back of your mind, uh, which suggested that you were in somewhat close proximity to a hist tree. Um, so, it, so it makes sense that it makes sense that there'd be a sizable Argonian population here. Um, so, and, and Argonians occupy all sorts of different uh, positions in this town in terms of like employment, um, ranging from dock workers to salt rice farmers to fishermen um, to even just merchants and mages and the like. Um, almost none of them are in. Uh, the ruling council, however, uh, House Rhetorin usually kind of manages the affairs in Ebonheart. Perfect. All right, so I don't, so like disguising myself is like not, you know, crucial. Because yeah. Because there's plenty of Arcadians here. Got it. Yeah. You just probably don't want to be wearing that, uh, your fancy leathers. No, of course not. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Your fancy leathers, uh, wink, wink. Like, that, that's, hey, that's for the ladies. <laughs> All right, I guess I, I guess I enter. I am in the bar now. Okay. I guess I head to the uh, to the counter to where I would order myself a drink. Okay. Um, any particular drink or just you know uh, a standard ale or Flynn? Nah, just ale, just whatever. Okay. Um, so so the barmaid actually hands you a goblet of Flynn. Um, which you know to be a, a Dunmer type of wine. Um, very common, the, the Dark Elves really, really love this, uh, kind of spicy drink. Um, so, so you start sipping on it, um, and as you scan over, uh, the people here in the inn, you find that there are members of almost every race present in this inn including a lot of orcs, and though you have been able to kind of discern different orcs from one another, um, your Argonian eyes still sometimes have that problem of, they all look the same. Um, oh, jeez, all right, then. So, what in particular might you be looking for, Thurman? Check? Yes, you may. Thank you. Uh, that's going to be 20 total. Okay. Um, so, you don't, you don't see uh, the person you're looking for uh, in, the, in this room. Um, however, you are kind of surprised to see that... Uh, uh, oh, uh... Bob, in response to in, in response to yours, I think you know Yoku, uh, Common, and um, I would say maybe Orcish. Um, so Thurman, um, you are kind of surprised to see, however, that at least one orc in the room um, matches a description that you had read in relation to the person you're looking for. Um, he's sitting over at a table with, uh, with, uh, with a Khajiit and a red guard. <laughs> yeah. No, I have my cloak. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. A small cloaked figure, um, and, uh, and a smaller Khajiit, um, <laughs> are all seated at this, uh, are, are seated at this table next to him. Um, he looks like have a very strong, um, have a very strong grip on his glass of whiskey. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now that orc, is he by chance the one in the like the one I'm aiming for, or one of his partners? One of his partners. Um, in fact, uh, you, you're actually kind of surprised to see him here, as last you'd heard, he had been 
um, arrested and taken to Davin's watch for execution. Uh oh. <laughs> but you're pretty sure. But you're pretty sure that if uh, that if he's here, that the person you're looking for might not be too far away. Because what reason would he have to be here than to meet up with his buddy? Of course. Yeah. All right. So, uh, I guess. Uh... I guess I'll just sit here and enjoy my drink, scan the horizon for now. Okay. Making sure that when he does arrive, I know where he is. Yeah. Um, does anybody want to go out and explore the sights and sounds of the city before nightfall? Or um, you guys just going to chill in the tavern? Um, I actually wanted to ask like the barmaid if she's aware of any jobs that are available right now. Well, we don't have much to offer. Most of the most of the jobs in town are accounted for. But I'm sure that if you were to ask anybody in House Rhetorin, they may be able to find work for you. Okay. Alright. <laughs> I'd like to well, ask if there's any sites worth seeing in this town. Um She kinda gives the closest equivalent to a to a smile that an Arg that an Argonian can manage. Um, to the, to the north of here, there's a very beautiful history that we've managed to, we've managed to transplant here from Black Marsh. That's perhaps one of the most beautiful sites for this one. But if you're looking for something else, there are shrines in the various, uh, there are shrines to the north and to the east and west. We've also got the Tribunal Temple here. The town hall is pretty impressive. I want to check a bookstore, if that's possible. Um, yeah, so uh, you get up from the table and you head out into uh, into the city to kind of take a look at where a bookstore may be. Um, so the city itself is actually a really impressive site, um, with Dunmary stonework looming, uh, looming tall in the sky. Um, the grandest of all of these buildings is the almost palatial town hall, which is controlled by House Rhetorin, um, and packed banners hang from its towers, just plain for all to see. Um, almost as impressive is the Tribunal Temple to the western side of the city, whose steeple rises up above the houses and markets. Um, the central plaza, as you pass through it, is filled with stalls and merchants who are trading and selling various wares, um, ranging from cooked quama eggs to ornate jewelry. Um, and a smaller building not far from the uh, temple is adorned with the sigil of Tamriel's Mages Guild. Um, and even, even through the window, you can see plenty of sorcerers and wizards milling about, uh, working on enchantments, studying tomes. Um, the eastern district, which you're coming from, uh, is mostly residential, with the exception of the Ebony Flask. Um... You're pretty sure that when it comes to books, there's, there's likely no better source for books than the Mages Guild. Okay. Well, I definitely want to check out the Mages Guild. Like, hey, I just want to check out your books. <laughs> okay. So you head inside, and it, it's quiet, save for the occasional uh, misfired spell. Mm -hmm. Um, And, uh, of course, like, shelves upon shelves of books are in here, and... Um, when you enter a young mage who appears to be one of the, uh, almost like a librarian, uh, comes up to you, and his Bosmer eyes kind of look up to you. Welcome, is, is there anything I can help you with? Uh, I just want to check out your books, you know? Ah, well, uh... Can take a sip of his drink? Well, we've got plenty of books here. Is there anything in particular you're looking for? Something about like monks, really, like something about more monks teaching. Well, you gotta let my supervisor. <laughs> he he brings I a. Come along with me if you want. <laughs> yes, I I think I might be able to help you out, though. We may need to narrow down your search. And he kind of strokes his chin, starts leading you toward the uh, toward the mage's library. Uh, which monks? Uh, which monks are you interested in? Are are you? Are you interested in the Sigic Order, or uh, 
uh, are you perhaps looking for the the monks of the nine or the monks of the uh, of the divines in Cyrodiil? Uh, I don't know what the Mystique's order are, so yeah. You haven't heard of the Sigic order? No. He kind of stifles a gasp a little bit. They're some of the most powerful mages ever in the history of Tamriel. That they they live on a on an island called Arteum, which is kind of separate from Tamriel. They're really quite fascinating. <laughs> huh? Well, that is kind of fascinating. Do they show like what kind of techniques they use? Well, they're mages. The their techniques are far more refined than most other mages. Uh, but they devote their entire lives to the study of magic. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, I'm, like, looking for stuff. Yeah, I think I'll check that out. Okay, so he leads you to an area of the library which has various tomes on the Sigic Order and um, as and also points out a couple of other uh, areas of the library which may have to do with different religious orders of monks. Um... Go ahead and roll a. Uh, go ahead and roll a. I'll say an investigation check for me. Investigation. I got a 10. Okay. Um, so amid all of the uh, all of the tomes that you're perusing, you do find one tome that uh, the writing in it is kind of strange, but you do recognize it as a spell book. Um, it's up to it's up to you if you want to spend uh, any time studying it. I'll, I'll spend time studying it. Okay. So in total, you're probably going to spend about four hours at the Mages Guild doing your research. Um, and you are able to learn a new spell from that tome. Um, so if you have a spell sheet, go ahead and add the Light Cantrip. Light Cantrip? Mm-hmm. All right. Light. All right. And that's it? Yep. Um, uh, I'm guessing that just produce light. Yeah. All right. Well, that's not bad. I like it. Yeah. All right. So now, Julianak left the tavern, leaving a certain young red guard unsupervised, along with a certain tiny cat. Yes, but I am supervising her. <laughs> You guys are supervising each other. That's why I trust you too. I feel like you're using that term very. <laughs> I hear. I feel like you're using that term very loosely. Listen, she is. Trust me. Does not mean that I'm doing a good moral job about it. <laughs> I just am watching her. <laughs> are you still high on moon sugar? No. Thank goodness I'm not. Okay. Yeah, Kashit managed to get through moon sugar highs fairly quickly because it's actually built into their diet. So yeah, but I mean that was like borderline skooma. So <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> she's come down. Okay, good. I don't have a cracked out kitty. No. <laughs> okay. So after after a little bit, I would. Zira probably actually gets quite bored once she's like done eating, and mm -hmm. the orc had informed her that she's not supposed to have alcohol, which she just rolls her eyes and drinks them anyways. <laughs> um, How dare you disobey your father? I mean, um, orc dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like she's drinking whiskey, it's just ale. Gosh. <laughs> Well, I guess, like, ale is not really too alcohol-ish, I guess. <laughs> that depends on the ale. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> but... Then again, like, Julianak, like, actually drank when he was, like, as younger than her. 
Most people in Tamriel uh, do end up getting a taste for alcohol at a fairly young age. Um, I like start drinking when I was three. <laughs> I feel like Zero would probably like something that's like more along like the uh, like a spiced wine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's sweet, in, but a little but warm. In fact, after you finish your ale, um, a, a one of the barmaids does end up like she uh, she makes a mistake with one of her orders and ends up giving you a goblet of Flynn, um, which was intended for someone else, but she gave it to you in it. It does taste somewhat of spiced uh, of spiced wine. Ooh, she's like, oh, this is good. <laughs> so, have you tried this before? What is it? Not sure. Drink it. <laughs> cool, yeah. Bones is not our good. <laughs> oh, good, good. So, Zoe, when to do with two drunk children. <laughs> so, Zoe, when you. Oh, help me now. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Um, so when you taste the when you taste the wine, um, you find that it's much too spicy and uh, not sweet enough for your taste. Too much flavor. Need more sugar. Where are the sugar packets? <laughs> no more <moon> sugar. <laughs> um, also, you uh, you brought the cooked quama eggs, and you weren't quite sure what you were expecting. Um, but when it comes to you, when it comes to you, it's in kind of like this wide plate. And you're pretty sure that they're just oversized insect eggs that have been heated over a fire. So, are they like boiled heated over a fire? Or are they just like sunny side up? What, what do these eggs look like? Uh, they look almost like they've been roasted. Okay, yeah. I'll eat it. I'll eat most things. I'm a scavenger. I just don't want to start going here. Um, so it, it's a very odd flavor, to say the least. Um, it, it makes you think a little bit of salmon eggs, um, but, n but not quite with the weird texture. Um, they're, they're a tad more firm because of the, because of how they've been cooked. So they're almost, they're almost like baked potatoes in, cons in consistency. Yeah, but still not sweet enough. I'm still hungry. Yeah. I mean, there probably isn't sugar packets because that shouldn't exist, but. <laughs> um, Tiny vials of sugar that you lay out in a line and then snort. I mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> if, if you want, you can see if another Khajiit in the room might have a little bit of moon sugar. Uh, a lot of Khajiit do carry uh, small amounts of moon sugar to help, uh, to help flavor their foods. Not enough to get them high. I mean, it would get any other race high, but it's not enough to get them high. Um, but Grant, just enough to... ...next to Tashdar and be like, Hey, it's got sugar. Edge off. <laughs> no? Dang it. Alright, uh, I'm gonna go... Ask some I more. feel like some catnip, too. <laughs> <laughs> um... That you, you do see a Khajiit leaning by the doorway to the room, kind of enjoying the music, and uh, he's kind of rolling a coin between his fingers back and forth. Alright. So I'll go up to them and I'll be like, hey, uh, male or female? Male. Alright. Then it's gonna say, hey handsome, uh, do you got any sugar on you? Not the, not the kissing kind, I'm just looking for something to make my eggs taste better. He, he looks down at you. You're a long way from home. Uh, a long way from home, aren't you? Well, many ways is a long way when your your legs are this tiny. Ah, fair enough. And this one has a little bit of moon sugar. He may be tempted to part with a little. All right. So he uh, pulls out a he pulls out a, a a vial of moon sugar and uh, pours a little bit out into your hand, but. This one does not give it to you for free. Perhaps you have a septum on you. A what? Perhaps you have a septum on you. Oh, yeah, the currency. Yeah, I can carry that. Okay. So he happily snatches up the coin and uh, just as you're about ready to turn, uh, turn away, may your road lead to warm sands. Oh, thank you. 
if I ever cross you on the road, be sure to help you out if you need it. For a price. He smiles and then uh, goes back to listening to the bard. I'm just gonna go back to my table and be like, I got some sugar, you want some on yours? Uh, oh god. No. <laughs> he just stares at you for a moment, remembering what happened the last time you ate some. Nope, I'm good. No, it won't be like that. It will be fine. The other kind was a bit wonky. <laughs> um... Go ahead and do a persuasion check. Oh god. <laughs> Don't give in the peer pressure. Don't give in the peer pressure. <laughs> what would I roll against that? Uh she's she's rolling a persuasion check. Uh you can go ahead and do a will check. would be a 21. <laughs> oh, so despite all the peer pressure, you're you're obstinate. You're just like, no, no, not putting that in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so um, she's like, I think I will stick to my spiced wine. <laughs> straight and edge. My... <laughs> Very so, your straight edge. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean... No, she's more of a curved edge, but that's beside the point. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Sorry, puns. I still got the Sweeney Todd song stuck in my head. <laughs> so, um, so you guys kind of go about your business. Um, Thurman. Yes. So, standing over by the counter and sipping on your flan, you're just about done with the goblet, and as you look down into your drink, you realize that you forgot to you forgot to make your supplies. Oh, dang it! How embarrassing! How clumsy! <laughs> How foolish! All right, I get up. Excuse me, ma'am. I have to barkeep. Yes. Yes. You fine piece of tail. Listen, I'm looking for a nice alchemist table. You wouldn't have to have one around this area, would you? Well, we don't have one here, but the Mage's Guild may have one. There's also an alchemist's shop in town. Hmm. I will head to the alchemist's shop. Can you point me the way? Um, she gives you some directions leading you through the, uh, through the western district. Um, and you're able to find the alchemist's shop with no hassle. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Okay, so once you're there, there is an alchemist table there, um, and on all sorts of different shelves, there are like vials, potions, um, jars of dried herbs and alchemical components. Um, you even see a couple of uh, a couple of jars which have the have much more rare ingredients, such as uh, uh, such as Daedra hearts, um, and Easily, some of the some of the uh, components that are nice and full are include like scrib jelly and um, mud crab chitin, uh, so, such stuff as that. Um, but you currently don't have any alchemical components on you, um, so you may have to either buy or forage. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna need to buy some with the gold I don't have. <laughs> um. Go ahead and roll a. Go ahead and roll a percentile. Percentile. Yeah. Okay. Uh, twenty-seven. Okay, that's how much gold that the. Uh, that's how much gold that the uh, that. Uh, the the speaker provided you with before you left. Excellent. All right, and I'm going to use this to purchase the supplies I need to make a potent uh, juice, if you will. Okay, so you're looking to make a a poison of ravage health. Yes. Okay. Um. So you peruse the you peruse the shelves and you do find a couple that you're pretty sure will work out nice and easy. Um. 
one jar has uh, a strange kind of red mushroom in it, which you recognize as stinkhorn. Um, and then another one has uh, blue mushrooms that glow slightly. Uh, you recognize it as violet copperness, and you know that combined with a good with a good source of clean water. Uh, and with the right amount of, or with the right proportions and whatnot, um, this basically makes one of the most basic of poisons that you, that you learned while growing up. Excellent. My training shall pay off. <laughs> find some clean water. Oh, um, tough. there are various vials of water of varying, uh, waters of varying qualities. Um, in, in fact, even better as you're going through and scanning through everything uh you find you find oil-based solvents that you know that you know are even better for poisons uh, okay so of the two that you that you think you'd need most there's uh, there's ichor and grease uh which one would you like i'll take the ichor okay so that's going to be that's going to be about three gold Mm -hmm. Um, and then each of the, uh, each of the ingredients is going to be about two gold each, um, and then scale it up based off of how many vials of this poison you're going to be brewing. Well, one vial allows me to use three charges, as per my class ability. Yes. Alright, so one vial should do the trick. Okay. So... You manage to throw together a lovely uh, poison of Ravage Health. Excellent. Good, good. And I'm going <laughs> to leave the uh, alchemist, the owner of this fine establishment, a tip. Very nice. Two acceptance. A and, a, and a wink and a smile. And a very awkward Argonian smile. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, the... going to be like that toothless smile? Like, yeah, I'm smiling uh -huh. really hard. <laughs> The you, you're trying. That's all that matters. <laughs> uh, the store keeps smi uh, smiles back at you um, as you turn and head out, uh, head back out into the town. Um, in the distance, you can hear rumbling from the uh, from the mountains. Uh, you're not sure if it's thunder or if it's actually the uh, volcanoes themselves, um, but uh, the pitter of rain is beginning to fall on the cobble. Yeah, for the most part, you see mostly non-Argonians non uh, rushing to pack up their wares and get everything moved into a dry place, um, rushing to get to houses or whatever building they're staying in. Um, the Argonians themselves, however, they're they're like they do pack up their wares quickly, but other than that, they just casually stroll to the northern district. Um, rain's nice; they they enjoy it on their scales. Uh, around the time the rain starts falling, Julianak, um, you wrap up your studying. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. so... And I head back to the tavern, make sure the children are okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you guys get back, and now the tavern is nice and packed. Um, the barmaids are kind of running around full tilt, um, the innkeeper has her hands full, um... You can either you can even occasionally, when you're close by the stairwell, hear the sounds of a whip coming from the basement. Um, but uh, oh, oh my. <laughs> uh, oh, no. <laughs> I tr I try to like cover up like one of the children's ears, maybe even Zoe or like Zyra. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys kind of settle in and. Get ready for your evening meal uh, and drinks and whatnot. And Jilinak, as you're sitting at the table, um, sipping on your whiskey, mm -hmm. um, a, a a child walks up to you holding a folded piece of parchment. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, yeah. I, I was told to give you this. Uh, he didn't tell me his name. Um, he looked a lot like you, 
but he said he really wanted me to give you this, and he gave me some money for it. So I'm, um, uh, and so he he hands you uh, the folded piece of parchment. Okay. Um, does it say anything on it? Yes, it does. Um, so pull it up. Doink. Okay. All right, so you open it up, and you find that it's actually a letter. Um, mm -hmm. Inside it says, Jules, long time no see you, Lug. I, I didn't recognize you when, you when I saw you walk into the inn. I, I couldn't meet up with you because I'm on the job, but I'm also in town. Honestly, though, I, I could use your help. Got a heist plan for what would make Sheogarath weep with joy. But I want to pull it off so I don't make an ass of the Thieves' Guild. Tell you what. Meet up with me tonight at Sothaseel's Shrine, just north of town. Bring anyone you think can keep quiet and help. If we pull this off, I'll give you a portion of the cut. I hope to see you there. And it's signed, Rory. Um, Rory? Rory. Uh, Rory, you know, is... Um, Rory is your... Uh, one of your old crime buddies. In fact... The heist that you were most recently arrested for um, was as a result of um, you got arrested after you guys had gotten caught uh, trying to steal some black uh, blackbriar mead. Um, and your guys' plan initially was to water it down and sell it for cheap. Um, yeah. Sound about right. <laughs> <laughs> um, unfortunately, however, um, the guards ended up catching up with you eventually. So you managed to get arrested, but somehow, somehow, Rory managed to slip through his chains and leave after like fast talking the guard. Something, something about a relative named John. Uh, you're not really sure. Um, but he was able to get away. Um, meanwhile, you were sent to Davin's watch to uh, Davin's watch to pay a visit to the executions block. Um, however, before Rory managed to escape, he did promise that he would eventually come and try to find you. Um, but you hadn't heard of you hadn't heard of heard or seen him since. Um, what a friend! Wait, is he like supposed to be my Ricky? <laughs> Um, sure. I'm not sure what that means, but <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> so... Like I said, like, my character's based off Trailer Park Boys. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think he's Ricky. He sounds too smart to be Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so... Okay. And, and you know that he's generally good for his word when it comes to, when it comes to various heists. Okay. Yeah. But... I crumple up the paper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, I was, like, thinking in my head, because, like, I'm just, like, I don't want to go back to jail again. But, yeah. <laughs> um, you also know that if he's saying he needs help, that it's probably going to pay well. Uh, that's true, but I don't want to go back to jail again. I'm on my path of redemption. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you fl so you crumple up the piece of paper. <laughs> you crumple up the piece of paper and and do you toss it on the floor or? Do you... I think I'll just keep it for now and think about it, please. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I'd like to know what you guys are doing this evening. told me about uh, the what they have available in this town to look at mm -hmm. and I thought I don't know if I'm going to steal anything yet I don't really <laughs> want to travel to all these artistic places and have my face be seen so I'm just going to chill till I know what we're doing because I am traveling with a bunch of strangers mm -hmm. is there anything in town that might help me find the person I'm seeking um Possibly. Go ahead and do an investigation check. Ooh, that's 20. So <laughs> 21. <Woo>! Um, 
eventually, eventually you're able to find a uh, little book. Um, it, it's one of the books, like, kind of in... The, the inn has its own sort of, like, small library uh, for people who want to read while they stay. Um, and you do find a book which kind of... It's an account regarding uh, regarding the worm cult. Um, okay. And uh, what it describes is very similar to what you saw performed by, uh, the, by the guy who has caused so much trouble for you. Mm -hmm. So at the very least, it might help you understand him a bit better. Uh, Tashtar, uh, I assume you're still cheating people out of their money? Mm -hmm. Always. Not anymore, I don't think. Okay. What would you like to do? So you said it's evening, not night yet? Yeah, it's evening now, and it's raining nice and hard outside. Is it raining men? It's not raining men. Though some people in the tavern greatly wish it were. <laughs> not I. Uh, <laughs> I think Tashgar, uh, Tashgar is going to uh, um, go to bed early. Okay. Get up early. Take a little cat nap. <laughs> Okay, so you head up to your room and uh and curl up on the you know, on the bed and take a nap. And I also go to bed. Yes, you may. <laughs> Do you snuggle up with Tashtar like a you know, like adorable snuggling cats? <laughs> that well. Fair enough. <laughs> so you find another bed to sleep in. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. As the Eventually it gets closer to midnight. Um, Thurman. I want you to roll a will check for me. Will check? Yes. I will do that. <laughs> I got that one. Okay. Um. <laughs> so, as you guys are kind of uh, doing your own thing, suddenly, all of you see just every Argonian in the tavern stops what they're doing, including Ajanti. And their gaze is all shift northward. Who's fucking with my tree? Does uh, anybody do anything with this information? <laughs> I'm in my room. Zira kind of raises a brow from the corner where she's reading and kind of looks around and is like, interesting. Um, she doesn't know a whole lot about the Argonians aside from their, like, poisonous swamp lizards, so... <laughs> <laughs> she's like, this is fascinating. <laughs> Um, Ajanti, you, as well as, uh, several other Argonians, um, find yourself, find yourself compelled to leave the inn and head toward the history. Alright, let's go. <laughs> it's baby, can't say no to that. <laughs> so, Argonians begin to file out of the tavern, um, which... Uh, like, quite a few people at this point, like, even the music has stopped, because people are just watching this strange occurrence. The Argonians rarely ever act like this. Um, even the barmaid uh, kind of pushes past people without, without, without so much as even a word and just leaves the inn. <gasps> How many people are left in the inn? Only those who are not Argonians. Quite a few. There's a decent number of uh, of Dunmer clientele. Um, quite a few uh, Nords as well. Dang it. A few Khajiit. Are you trying to find your people? Not good stealing time. And I'm asleep, so I can't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I dream of stealing. <laughs> um, so... 
Thurman, the hist guides your steps. Uh, almost in a daze, you walk toward the northern part of town, toward the Argonian district, um, along with the other Argonians who have joined you. <clears throat> uh, you pass through an opening in the, in the mud wall uh, that the Argonians had constructed around their little town, and you can see the hist tree rising up uh, out of a pool of murky water in the center of town, uh, or in the center of the district. Um, and surrounding this tree um, are Argonian mages that you recognize as Hist Guardians. Um, and all of the, like, practically the entire population that was in the district at the time is all circled around the Hist tree, and everybody's attention is drawn um, toward an orc who's trying to sweet talk his way out of um, basically practically being torn to shreds. Um, in his hand, you see uh, you see a tap and a vial. Oh, oh fuck! Oh, he fucked up! <laughs> oh shit! Oh, he fucked up hard! Um, and. Between like as he tries to mumble stuff about uh, gems and Johns and stuff uh, from between his tusks, uh, go ahead and do an uh, go ahead and do an intelligence check for me. Intelligence, you say? Yes. <laughs> That's going to be a fifteen. You are looking you like you are looking at the man that you were sent to find. So, already, um, like, like the magic that uh, the magic uh, of the sacrament kind of begins to pull at your at your dagger at your belt, and you feel that familiar twinge of needing to go up and feed the blade. Uh, the orc's blood. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's gonna happen. <laughs> so may I um, first coat my blade with uh, some good old-fashioned poison? Yes, you may. Yes, you may. Okay, I do just that. Okay. And I'm gonna stab the fuck out of this guy. Um, <laughs> you have no problem doing this, as um, all of these Argonians are kind of just like, slowly walking toward him. They already have the intention of killing him in mind. Um, See, so you walk up behind him as he's trying to talk to the Hist Guardians, mm -hmm. and your blade just slices right across his throat. Um, oh, God. <laughs> and the Argonian drops dead. Um, his, Argonian, his... Oh, no. Or not Argonian, the, the orc drops dead, his blood flowing into the, flowing into the water, and... As if the spell were broken, all of the Argonians just kind of shake their heads and then head back to whatever they were doing before the history was calling to them. Mm. I, I put away my dagger. Whoa, whoa what happened? <laughs> oh man, that was a bear. Oh, hey, he's dead. <laughs> How convenient. I take his teeth. <laughs> so, so you, go, go ahead and do a strength. Go ahead and do a strength check for me. So, so you start grabbing at Rory's tusk, and you're just, like, pulling and pulling and yanking until finally it comes free. And now you have a, now you have a trophy of your most recent kill. Excellent. Oh, God. <laughs> um, the, it, the, the tusk is kind of decorated with intricate carvings. Um, so, so, like... Um, oh, man. and, and Aren't you glad luckily, <laughs> luckily <Yeah>. there was, <laughs> luckily there was an area in the, in the tusk that was drilled through initially for a piercing. You're able to pierce, uh, to pull that away and like put the tusk around your neck like a, uh, like a necklace. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and you begin to head back up into... Uh, 
it head back up to the ebony flask in um the blade is sated and uh almost like the magic almost seems to purr happily um and you know that the you, you know that uh the orc's soul has been sent to Sithis. Uh, and meanwhile, you already see uh, the hist guard between the hist guardians and various mud crabs. Um, the orc's dead body is being pulled into the murk, where uh, his corpse will feed the roots of the history. You know what? Hey. Wow. Everyone wins. Um, <laughs> the circle of life. <laughs> Um, Wait, um, this happened outside the tavern, right? Or this happened in... This happened in, uh, Wizard Town. Oh, okay, yeah, alright, so I haven't seen it. Of... But I don't really know that, so now I don't know that Rory's dead now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, eventually the orcs begin, uh, funneling into the, uh, into the tavern again. The um, Argonians. Or the Argonians. You undermet what I stood. Um... Yeah. <laughs> And they begin to go back to whatever it was that they were doing before they left, almost as if nothing had happened. Um, Zira, like, again, looks up from her book, looks over at them like, yep, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, I go up to the barkeep and say, like, what just happened? Why did everyone left? What do you mean, what happened? You guys just left outside the tavern like you were in a Oh, do I notice anything different about any of the Argonians that come back in, by the way? Um, I have a, I have a jump, I've got a hop and a skip in my step. <laughs> uh, go ahead and do a perception check. Um, Chulinak, I need your passive perception. My passive perception? Yes. Um, uh, wait, do I have to roll for something, or you just want me to look at it? Just look at it. Passive perception is 10 plus your perception. 10 plus my perception. Uh, 12. Okay. I got a 24. So, all of the Argonians, as they begin to drift back into the room, Zira, um, mm -hmm. they do so sort of in a, in like a pseudo trance before they go back to normal, uh, as if no time had passed. Uh -huh. <clears throat> um, that is with the exception of one Argonian. Okay. Um, who, like, while he's able to pull it off fairly well to most untrained eyes, he does have a bit more of a spring in, a spring in his step than the other Argonians had. Okay. Is he also, you know, a tusk around his neck, like a pretty, pretty necklace? Yes. Um, Is it still bloody? <laughs> it does still have a little bit of uh, gore on it, yes. <laughs> um, so he just kind of looks up and goes, Interesting. And then, uh, Rory. Or not Rory. Chulinak. Uh, okay. as, other, as another Argonian comes and sits down by the counter, you notice that his necklace is familiar. Familiar. You know that Rory enjoyed carving his tusks, um, almost like a badge of honor. It was something he'd learned from his clan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this tusk around the Argonian's neck has those carvings on it. Oh, I and, keep an eye on Jelinek and this Argonian with the tusk. Um, just to see if something's going on. Okay. Interesting necklace. Oh, thank you. It's, uh... I do got it. It's, like, quite familiar. Uh, family gift. Yes, a gift for my family. I, I mean, he's not wrong. Orc, I, <laughs> I, may be, I may be a city orc, but I know, but I am familiar with those runes and that, and um, that tusk. Oh. Oh, were you familiar with this one? What do you do to Rory? Um, it's not so much what I did to him, but as to what he did to himself. <laughs> if you'd like to discuss it with my drink, I'd be happy to. Would you care to you just me? Mm -hmm. Wait, what are you, wait, wait, what are you asking? I can hear you. 
with me, we'll have a discussion about it. So you just killed Roy? Well, I didn't kill him. He kind of did it to himself, like I said. I'll explain it. It's well, explain it to me now. All right. Or else you get a staff to the face. <laughs> uh, what do you prefer? Tell me what happened. Why you just killed my friend? All right, all right. Listen, what do you know about the Hist? <laughs> Have you heard about our Lord and Savior, the Sift? Or have you heard about our Lord and Savior, the Hist? <laughs> have you heard about our Lord and Savior, the Hist? <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> no? Well, all Argonians are born from the great tree known as the Hist. It gives us all life. And, uh, well, your friend here uh, tried to take a, uh, well, a bit of a sap from one of our local trees. That doesn't jive by us, Argonians. And when that happens, well, we sort of lose ourselves in this uh, pseudo-trance, if you will. And, well, to make a long story short, he tried to get that sap, and he's feeding the tree now. I just so happened to get his tusks before he uh, sinked into the dirt. Go ahead and do a persuasion check. Me? Yeah, and I'll go ahead and give you advantage, because you do have... There's plenty... <laughs> Because <laughs> there's plenty of truth behind uh, behind what you were saying. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to let you know right now, my personality is four. <laughs> I have four personalities. Okay. Brilliant. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that's going to be a negative two. <laughs> um, so as you're listening to his story, uh, Raven, mm -hmm. you... Almost instinctively, you're sizing him up. Um, yeah. And you notice that tucked into a sheath <clears throat> uh, on his belt is a dagger. Mm -hmm. And there's still a little bit of blood on it. Uh -huh. You can see kind of dripping out of the scabbard a little bit. Okay. Oh, that's just, that's just jam. Um, was I able to overhear the conversation? Uh, go ahead and do a perception check. Well, fuck, now I'm not gonna be able to do that job. 22? <laughs> you fucking bad. Um, you do hear the conversation. Um, and you can see Julianak is getting visibly aggravated. Um, does what the Argonians said about, like, what was done seem... I hesitate to use the word honorable, but I feel like that is the closest word to use. Um, that's what it is. More what was that, Duncan? Would believable be, be a more accurate word to describe it? <laughs> no, justifiable, I think. Like, okay. his, his tree, which is sacred to them, was threatened, and they defended. Yeah, he was trying to burn down my church, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Argonians leave in a big huff. Yeah, I mean, I, I did watch them zombie out and zombie back <laughs> in, so... Yeah. Um, and, and if you'd like, you can do either an insight or a history check. Uh, I'll go with insight, since I'm proficient in that. Um... This pink dye really likes me. Uh, that <laughs> 20 for a 25. Damn. <laughs> Very nice. Um, great. <laughs> in, so I've tested both of these before when I bought them. <laughs> as you were growing up, um, as part of your noble upbringing, you were taught um, about the cultures of other races. Okay. Um, and it has been noted that a few times in history... Um, that the Argonians would sometimes end up being controlled by the Hist itself. Okay. Um, which you, you think may have been what happened here. Okay. Um, and Jelenak looks like he's getting kind of ready to strike. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> from what you... Move from my seat? Mm-hmm. Um, over to him and rest my hand against his arm. 
Okay. Um, Julianak and Ashanti. Yes. What are you doing? <laughs> I... A big old awkward smile. E. I'm, I'm trying to be charming here. Julianak, what? <laughs> Julianak, what you see is this Argonian starts burying his fangs. <laughs> Because like at the fa- at the same time like this guy like got like, he was still my friend so I think I will I'm sorry Andrew but I'm gonna hit you with my staff. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, your your staff is currently in your room, so you may actually have to just swing a punch. What? Um, I mean in my room. I have it with me at all time. <laughs> <laughs> Whiskey in one hand, staff in the other. Yes. <laughs> Which hand was I putting my arm on? I would assume it was the hand with the staff as opposed to the one with the whiskey, because he can drink all he wants. <laughs> <laughs> um I I I'd say you, you do put it on the <clears throat> you do put your hand on the uh arm with the staff. Okay. <clears throat> you like reach up as far as you can to put your hand there. <clears throat> mm. Um, and then Ajanti, you see this, um, small cloaked figure walk up and just put its hand on, (laughs) on the orc's arm. Oh, friend? Uh, Reven, what would you like to do? Um, well, because she stopped me, I'd be like, what? I tell you in Orcish, his ways are not your ways, but he defended his home just as any of us would. And I replied to you back in Orcish. The person you killed was one of my a good friend of mine. You and think your I can friend forgive that? Threatened what is equivalent to his church. I say fuck the church and hit him with my staff. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> uh, go ahead and do a, go ahead and do a contested strength check, uh, between Zira and Julianak. Okay. A 21. <laughs> I got a 19. Um, you're trying to pull out of her grip, but she is surprisingly strong for how small she is. Hand around your wrist with a look of it is not honorable. Uh, barkeep, um, can we get another shot of uh, whiskey or whatever she has? <laughs> We're gonna need a lot. <laughs> um, the the barkeep hastily goes and grabs a uh, a, a large jug, um, and pour and pours a like the strongest uh, the the strongest whiskey she could possibly find. Unfortunately, she doesn't have Arsenium brew, but <laughs> um. Reven, uh, you can go ahead and get a luck point. Um, and for those of you who don't know, luck is the equivalent of uh, inspiration in our Elder Scrolls game. Got it. Okay, cool. Zoe, you come down into the into the dining area um, to see that uh that Zira and Julianak are both at the counter, and it looks like it looks like um, Zira is trying to prevent a bar fight from breaking out between Julianak and an Argonian. Mm-hmm. Yup. <laughs> yep. I mean, uh... she's all for killing, but uh, not when it's not honorable. 
But he still killed my friend, though. <laughs> and your friend was a criminal who would have been probably arrested and hung. So... This, this is the same friend who left you in jail. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess. So, yeah, I just, like, kind of calmed down a little bit. Take a, take a, take a, a at least a surprisingly bigger s sip of my drink. <laughs> there you go. Now we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> I glared at you. Uh, Zero just looks up at you with that look of for serious. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I'm not good with people. I understatement I, of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. I know. <laughs> um, Tashtar. Yes. Tashtar. You wake up from your nap with a gnawing hunger. Oh, God. <laughs> um, Tommy has a rumbly that only hens can <laughs> um, He looks at Andrew's character and starts, like, getting a stomach growling. <laughs> it's not Argonians. <laughs> when you... Um... When you go through and kind of take a look through... Uh, the menu that's being offered, none of it really sounds all that appetizing. All right. And <laughs> in the back of your mind, um, you, you hear a voice. I feel your hunger. You wish to dine, mortal. <laughs> Die on the Argonian. Um, and, and you feel almost like a pull, uh, kind of, le like, part of you wants to go outside, um, to, to follow where the hunger takes you. All right. Do you, do you follow it or do, or do you try to resist? Yes, I will, I will follow it. <laughs> okay. So... You guys saw Tashtar kind of walk into the room, take a look at the menu, and just, like, get up and walk out of the inn. Tashtar, um, where are you going? Oh, nothing on the menu really suits my taste. <laughs> Zero just gets this look of, like, <laughs> disgust as she thinks about the last thing she watched him eat. <laughs> And kind of shivers a little bit, and then is just like, ugh. <laughs> I talked to you in Orkish, like, um, should I stop him? Uh, if he plans on eating someone, maybe. I mean... I think that's what he means. Oh, I was so hoping it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you might want to. I mean, okay. there are a lot of... Argonians in town. I don't know if it's a Argonian thing or just a uh, eating people thing. Okay. I grab <laughs> I grab Trash Star by the neck and like a cat. Uh, <laughs> quick question: Is the door already open and is it nighttime? It is nighttime, and the door. Uh, you are able to head out the door. And just as you get outside the door, um, you feel the orcs grip on the back of your neck, and you can't help but to cringe, almost like a cat being scuffed uh <laughs> they're being scruffed <laughs> all right we just got here in town we are not gonna get in trouble because you decided to eat some gronians um what what lighting am i in at the moment um it's fairly well lit despite the rain like the there are lanterns and glowing fungus that are keeping the area lit okay Let me think what I'm going to do right now. Um, I believe I'm going to cast darkness on myself. <laughs> um, you and Julianak are. Even though I still feel him. Yes, he can. Um, like your grip doesn't let up, but you now can't see anything. 
Oh, and crap, not this again. <laughs> I'm going to use the uh, Nightblade ability Shadow Step to teleport within 60 feet in darkness. Spawn, like, right away. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll allow it. Um, you manage to, like... Jelena, in your hand, suddenly, you just gone. <laughs> You're not sure where the cat went, but he's not in your hand anymore. And then Tashtar, um, you managed to you managed to slip away from the inn toward the uh, northern end of town, which was the nearest spot of natural shadow you could find, uh, or that your magic could find. Um, and the pull is taking you uh, is taking you northward. All right, I will continue to follow it. <laughs> okay. Um. Zira, what are you doing in this instance? Uh, same with Zoe and Ajanti. I just, I just look and I'm like, oh god. <laughs> well, fuck. This is training day all over again. <laughs> I glare at you again. Uh, hey, hey, take it easy, man. What's your name? Out of curiosity. Julianak. Julianak, it's a pleasure to meet you, Julianak. Listen, I know we got off on the wrong foot, or in this case, the wrong tusk, but... <laughs> I glare at you again harder. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm sure that in time, these wounds will heal, and there will be better people for it. And we'll be better friends. So why not just continue having a drink with me, huh? I'm gripping on myself a little bit harder now. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, <clears throat> I think I need to uh, get my lodgings for tonight, and then uh, I'll probably uh, be off tomorrow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh... Guess I'll, I'll see you in the morning. Hopefully not. <laughs> uh, so... Give me your task. Hmm? Give me your task. Very well. I don't need proof of it, so more of a trophy for me, but here you are. Well, it's deserved <laughs> to be with his family, so... Well, he's with my family now, in a sense. <laughs> uh, I, I, like, wait, I, like, talk to Zyra and Orkish, like, can I please just hit him? <laughs> I don't think we need to be starting a scene, especially seeing as we're not <laughs> meant to be seen. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Zoe, what are you up to? I'm still sleeping. Oh, <laughs> so I thought you came back. Sleep so hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long cat nap. Ah. <laughs> um, oh no, she's full on sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> so, the the orb of darkness uh, dissipates. And you're not sure where uh, Tashtar had managed to wander off to. I'm sure he'll be back, hopefully cleaned up and not having done anything too awful. I highly doubt that. Yeah, so did I. I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alright, I'm just gonna go to bed, sleep all this off. And yeah. <laughs> Tashtar, um, <clears throat> you manage to follow your hunger northward past the Argonian district. Um, uh, you end up swimming through the water up toward the shrine of Sothasil. Um, and there you can see a, uh, you can see a Khajiit kind of, while rare, it is, it does occasionally happen where, um, members of other races might worship the gods of another race. Um, and there is a Khajiit there who seems to be um, trying to worship uh, Sothasil. Um, and in the back of your mind, you just hear... You, you hear that voice again. Dine, mortal. Your meal is served. Dine in my name. Uh... This is far less convenient than my previous meal, and this seems like a lot of effort. <laughs> I'd rather not. 
Um, go ahead and do a will save. Oh, God. <laughs> will is not my best stat, so I'm hoping for the best here. <laughs> that is a seven. The hunger is practically overpowering, and before you even really think about it, your dagger is in hand and slicing across the neck of the uh, of the Khajiit that was at the shrine. Um, and you <laughs> and you feel compelled to start eating. Okay, um, I'm going to cast Unseen Servant to help me wade through the body parts to find something to eat in there. Oh, there's plenty. She was nice and healthy. All right. Now it's cannibalism, bitch. <laughs> You're right. Now it is cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> and as you're eating in the back of your mind, do you dine in my name, mortal? Hmm. I'm going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I died for myself. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> is that so? Well, it is already too late. So, yes. I will not shun you for your meal. And then, uh, in the back of it, like, the, it, the fur on the back of your neck begins to stand on end. And when you turn, you find that there is, uh, there is an Argonian child nearby just staring in abject horror. <laughs> he he begins he begins to move like he's about to run back to town. Oh, you're gonna have to kill him. Oh great. <laughs> hmm. What to do, what to do. Is this what they call fast food? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um hmm. I'm not going to kill a kid. Okay, but so... <laughs> I don't gotta do nothing. <laughs> but you gotta. <laughs> so he runs back into town. What do you do at this point, then? <laughs> well, uh... Hmm. I'm going to... Take the... I'm going to bury the body. I'm going to cast Unseen Servant to help me. <laughs> Four hands are better than two. <laughs> I'll cast Mage Hand, so I'll have even more. <laughs> if you were to cast Mage Hand, it would dispel your Unseen Servant, so... Um. <laughs> okay, so you're frantically trying to bury this body. At this point, um, up in the tavern... Uh, you guys hear the door slam open, and this Argonian kid just comes running in, uh, screaming some sort of, some sort of, like, panicked, uh, panicked words. Just, you're not quite sure what he's saying, because he keeps slipping between common and gel. Um, which means, Ajanti, you're able to understand most of it, but something to the, something to the effect of... Um, there's been a murder, and uh, and there's a zombie at the shrine of Sothasil. Oh, I, when he says murder, I go, oh, oh, oh no! <laughs> and then he says the shrine of Sothasil. I'm like, oh, that's not me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, uh. Um. Oh, jeez. Oh, good lord. Okay. Um. Let's go check it out. Let's go have a look. And see what happened. Who got murdered? Uh, Julianak, I believe you're still awake and in the room. Uh, you hear all of this as well. Okay, I run downstairs, seeing what all the shouting's about. <laughs> um. What's going on? Any anybody waking up anybody else, or is it just gonna be these two? <laughs> um, if 
if there was screaming, I probably would have gotten out of bed. So yeah. Zira is a light sleeper. Okay. Yeah, then you, you hear what this kid is saying. <laughs> or at least the bits of it that's in common. Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. She she kind of runs, uh, she comes down closer, and she looks over at Jillinak, and she goes, we should go. Oh, yes, we should. All right. Um, we need to get the other cat, though. There's more of you? <laughs> <laughs> One taking a catnip. So I go up to uh, Zoe's room, if I can find it, <laughs> um, and try to wake her, and wake her up. Just a knock on my door would get me up and I'd just be like, like creep out, see who it is. What do you want? <laughs> I go up to you and say, like, we need to leave. Why? Is it like Trash a Trash Star? Do I need to grab my stuff kinda leave or just I... grab your stuff, come on, we need to get out of town. Okay, okay, let me just let me just grab my sack and let's go. Alright, let's go. Alright, and I grab her and we're all Running. I'm going to scuff your neck. No, I told you I don't want to be carried like that. <laughs> 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 so, you, so you guys start heading out of the out of the inn. Um, Ajanti, I would like you to make a quick. Um, actually, no. What's your passive perception? Ten. Okay. As you guys are about ready to leave, you find a piece of uh, a piece of crumpled paper on the floor. Um. And and as you guys are quickly running, you pick it up and quickly unfold it to see the letter that Rory had sent Julianak. Um. And like, just kind of confirms your it confirms your suspicions as far as oh they must be meeting up. Um, so, do you guys, uh, do you guys head toward the Shrine of Sothasil to try to find your cannibalistic cat? Nope, because you guys entered a situation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I presume that's where we were headed. Um, and oh. with that passive perception of 15, I probably noticed the Argonian picking up the crumpled paper that I knew my friend had tucked away. Yes, you did. Out. <laughs> um, so I kind of just slow my pace a little bit to kind of, like, make sure that something doesn't come of that. But I'm more concerned about the cannibalistic cat. <laughs> and possible zombies. Possible zombies. <laughs> I don't know, that's what the tiny Argonian was yelling about. <laughs> yeah, but, you know. But he, he's getting it. But if it's anyone's involving zombies... Which means, like, you know, cannibalistic beings. I would assume it definitely would mean Trash Star. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> what, what was that, Zoe? I'm always ready to run from a situation, but what are we running from? We're getting out of town because we're probably about to get in trouble because we are as a trash. What? You were cutting. You were cutting in and out a little bit, Raven. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. Well, I say, well, we're trying to run out of town because, you know, we're probably going to get in trouble because of Trash Star. I don't know. And what do you do? Did he gamble but get caught cheating? No, <laughs> he got caught killing someone and pos and most likely eating babies. Look, I thought he was sleeping. How'd he kill someone? Does he sleep kill? Should I do watch out? <laughs> <laughs> No, he, he was awake. He 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 was awake. When so, a lizard friend. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Hey. Hey. I'm very attractive to my people. Sure. <laughs> um. So Julianax starts making movement toward to head toward the south gate of town. Um. While Ajanti and Sierra start heading toward north. I go to Zara like, you know, like, what are you doing? Where are you going? We need to get out of here. <laughs> we need to get 
We need to make sure that it is, this isn't actually our problem first. I second that because I don't want to just abandon the Tashdar off of something I haven't even seen happen. I third the notion. For reasons. <laughs> <laughs> and what if it is, uh, what do you think, what if this is like trash star that got into it? Well, then we kick him in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to stop. He's pretty, well, pretty chill guy. I'm sure he'll listen. All right, I, I go with you guys. <laughs> I feel like, well, for fuck's sake, and like take a another big drink of another big sip of my whiskey. <laughs> <clears throat> so you guys uh, run through the streets and down the down the stair down the uh, stairway leading to the Argonian district. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of slog your way past the glowing tree that is the hist, um, and. Um, eventually you find uh, another little stretch of water across, uh, across from which is, um, you can see, uh, a, a shrine dedicated to one of the members of the tri tribunal, um, whom you know is Sothasil, and kind of, like, only slightly cloaked by a shadow, you can see, um, you can see a Khajiit quickly working on digging. I'm like, oh, it is our idiot. <laughs> that one yours? Yeah, well, Sadly, yeah. yes. It's not a good idea to defile the dead. Just saying. Yeah, he is really the opposite right now. <laughs> I grabbed Tash Star, and we just start running out of town. <laughs> You're like, nope, we're going. <laughs> I'm just standing there like, yeah, we will be caught. <laughs> At least somebody finished burying the body first. No, you've already been caught. There's no, there's no point. <laughs> okay, one child saw me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll help you bury the body. Hold on. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Thank you. At least, at least someone's sort of on my side with this. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but what if they're like coming to investigate right now? Not well, a... that will no longer be my issue. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, you guys are gonna go bury the body. I will start walking away and... Yeah. <laughs> okay, Zero, what are you up to? I am not helping bury the body. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> Ashanti? Why am I here? I got other things to do. Y'all have fun with this. I'm just gonna mosey on out of here. <laughs> um. Okay, so you guys start heading toward uh, back toward town as Zoe and Tashtar uh, continue digging, trying to make a big enough hole to fit what's left of the Khajiit. Um, Khajiit's gonna stick together. <laughs> Um, and once you, <laughs> once you get into, uh, once you get closer to the Argonian district, um, a figure slips out of the shadows and stops in front of you. Um, the armor that they are wearing is a, a blackened leather, and you can see, uh, you can see kind of emblazoned on the chest is the is a black handprint um and you he you hear them speak toward uh, toward Ajanti. you fool that was my contract what which one that Khajiit up at the uh, up at the shrine oh. she was my contract oh no 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 no, no. You, we were mistaken i already took care of my contract here Hey, everyone, cover your ears. We need to talk. <laughs> I don't cover my ears. I pretend like I'm covering my come. ears by putting my hand under my hood, but I don't cover my ears. Uh, could we speak in a more discreet place, please? I Not just in front of the, the rabble. I just want to add that while I'm helping a Tashtar bury the body, I'm also casting Minor Illusion on us so it just looks like we're not there. 
<laughs> okay. Um, as far as anybody can tell, there's a hole digging itself <laughs> out at the shrine. With a couple of mud crabs and a Khajiit body. <laughs> <laughs> and if things go really well, we can just pass without a trace. Or it goes really poorly, I mean. What? What'd you say? Oh, if things go really poorly, we can just pass without a trace. Yes. Wonderful. Well, if you didn't kill my contract, then who did? The speaker is not going to be happy about this. I look to you guys. Why'd your cat kill the other cat? Do you, do you think I have control over? I'm not very. I'm not very much of a cat. <laughs> I mean, I am, but <laughs> they're not very controllable. <laughs> well, it's out of my hands. Down to them. <sighs> also, my mission is accomplished. <laughs> so you're like, so you're a dark brotherhood? Uh, well, <sighs> yeah. What of it? Shit. <laughs> yeah, hey, go to the club. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> All right. Not, but uh, more importantly, this fine gentleman. Who? who uh, what race is the the Brotherhood member who's standing for? Uh, he's an Imperial. Imperial. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, brother. Hi. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, sorry about that. Um. Probably tell your superiors to your speaker. <laughs> My superiors are your superiors, you idiot. Well, I know, but listen, I'm I'm loosely affiliated with these people. We were drinking together. That's it. Well, it's too late now. A kill begets a kill. Kind of it, uh, the assassin turns his eyes over Julianak and Zira. If you're associated with the one who killed. My quarry, who killed my quarry? Then you owe the Brotherhood. I am not associated with him at all. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. Regardless, Sithis needs a soul tonight. God damn that trash cat got us into trouble. Sira, what are you doing amid all of this? So, the two cats, like the idiots they are, <laughs> are digging a hole <laughs> to cover the half-eaten body. <laughs> Is the Argonian child still with us? No, he's up raising an alarm in town. <laughs> Probably not a bad idea. Change our plan. Hey, Talk it'll work into faster. The fucking swamp. Uh, you guys are already committed to taking this hole. <laughs> Please, Please, let's just get out of town. Go on vacation somewhere. Don't have on us so we can go fast, Sonic style. Um, um yeah, the imper the imperial looks at you. The Imperial looks at you, says, Grab your friends and follow me. Uh, I face palm and take the sip of my drink again. I don't know how I feel about that word friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me, very we're not. Term. <laughs> very loose. <laughs> All right. I, she follows. I mean, Zira already has everything she owns anyways. She has <laughs> her blades, those other two blades, her clothes, her cloak. She's good. <laughs> so who's going to head back and grab the cats? I will leave them a very sharp whistle. <laughs> <laughs> They're not dogs. It doesn't matter. I'm ne sure it perks their ears. <laughs> oh, it does. <laughs> 
him and I'm like, drop it, let's go. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll start following the group. <laughs> I I slap Trash Star on the back of the head. <laughs> hey, it's not entirely my fault. It yes, is, it, I, is. It, is, it is. It is mostly my fault. <laughs> I'll, I'll own up to that. But it's not 100% my fault. I glare at you. <laughs> well, I mean, you're abandoning your plan, then. I guess I have nothing to join into, so... Yeah, sure, let's go. <laughs> you guys in this I mean, situation, hey, said, now you're gonna get us out of it. Well, a kid said a zombie did it, and as long as, like, I'm out of town, that could be what people believe. That's why we're trying to get out of town. <laughs> That's what we're doing, like, now-ish, right? <laughs> probably not. We're probably gonna get very, very injured. Eh, we'll be fine. Well, <laughs> I'll be fine. No, you won't. I can leave at any point. <laughs> <laughs> the assassin leads you... The assassin discreetly leads you around uh, the western wall of the city uh, mm -hmm. to, a to a bridge and uh, across the bridge and continues walking up along the road um, until eventually uh, you get up on top of a hill where there's a way shrine, uh, a a like a little shrine dedicated to, uh, uh, to all three members of the tribunal uh, that you can often find these on the sides of roads and such, and it's overlooking. Uh, it's on a on a hill overlooking a little region where it can only be described as a forest of orange glowing fungus and coral. Um, Great. <laughs> and he finally stops and turns to look at all of you. So, if you pardon the pun, the cat is out of the bag. I will not. <laughs> I resent that. I want them in the bag. <laughs> uh, Shut up, you two. You don't know me. You're Shut up. <laughs> the Kishit that was killed at the shrine was, contra was contracted to be killed with the Dark Brotherhood. But, you seem to have... Whoa. Um, <laughs> what the shite was that? <laughs> that was an earthquake. <laughs> uh huh. So, as a result, you have deprived the Night Mother of a soul. So, at this point, you have a couple of options. Either my brother here and I kill you, or you agree to fulfill a contract in the name of the Dark Brotherhood. Sure, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I am not opposed to murder. I don't see an issue with this. No shit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the previous one was entirely my fault. It was mostly my fault. But... Did you kill them? Okay, I accidentally on purpose did a murder. I'm sure, one, I'm sure at least one of you can relate to that. Then I slap you, you on the back of the head again. <laughs> Just stop talking, please. Stop talking for like the rest of the day. <laughs> Wait, I wanna know I wanna know who they want us to kill. I mean does it matter? Yes. <laughs> yes. It matters to me. <laughs> um I know them. That would be awkward. <laughs> the Imperial uh looks you guys over and says So what's what will it be? We'll find someone to kill, I don't care. Oh no, it's not a matter of you finding someone to kill. Okay, it, is a matter, it, it is a matter of fulfilling a contract for the Brotherhood. Depends okay. on which contract. I mean, I, I should need to read it before I sign it, read the fine print. I've been told, I've been warned about that. Well, <laughs> You'd be quiet too. I'd like sign or die, and like... I mean, I've never died before, but I'd prefer to sign a contract. I've done that before. <laughs> um. Okay, but we we had nothing to do with this. me and and the smaller Kuchi. Like, we have nothing to do with it, so can you just let us go for it? No, there is no forgiving a stolen murder. But I had 
nothing to do with this. That's like not fair. He just looks at you, guilt by association, friend. Plus, you already know that we're here. You cut out. What'd you say? Yeah. Um, he says, guilt by association, my friend. And besides, you already know that the Brotherhood is here. And he kind of he kind of does like a sideways glare at Ajante. <laughs> okay, I may have I may have like done like some very criminal activities in the past, but I highly do I hardly do murder. You know that kind of weird. does not mean never do. Huh? <laughs> hardly do does not mean never do, and even if it was never, open yourself up to new experiences. I slap you on the back <laughs> of the head again. Blade for hire. What's that? I have rules of my own. Um, the Imperial gazes over at Yuzira and says, You may have rules of your own. I am not the one who chooses the contract. However, I can take you to someone who does. And if you're lucky, it may fit along your guidelines. So long as my honor is upheld, I will do this. Well, if I'm not going to get killed for it, and if I make some good money, so might as well. <laughs> Zoe? Want to get paid? <laughs> <laughs> um, Ajanti, as, as you know, everyone gets paid for, the, uh, for their kills. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> How much are we getting paid for this? That depends on the contract. It is not for me to tell. I am not a speaker. Shit, aren't doing a lot of speaking right now. <laughs> <laughs> what that? Got him. <laughs> um, so the assassin looks over at you, Ajanti. Yes. Get your rabble together. We head out. We head out to sea at dawn. You heard him, you're my ramble. <laughs> Legally, you are my ramble. <laughs> okay. So at this point, I would say it's a good time for a bio break. Um, All right. So, yeah. So as...